Hello again, and welcome back to Ag Finance. This will be the recorded lecture for the Unit 7 Cash Flow Budgeting and Recommended Reading Chapter 13. We're going to split this section into two segments, so let's get into our content here quickly. First things first, obviously the objectives that we have, and, and you're welcome to pause the video here. I'm not going to read these objectives to you. You can take time and review them in terms of what we hope to accomplish here. This first segment video should be the shorter of the two, but let's get to our content here. First off, from an introductory perspective, um, we want to be able to anticipate cash flow shortages and have a plan to deal with them in, in an important management activity. Uh, being able to know when cash is coming and when it's necessary for it to go out helps us make a lot of decisions in your agribusiness. You know, it's also a good forward planning tool and an ongoing analysis tool. And we hope to show you a few of those examples as we go through uh, this lecture. It's going to provide you some answers to the questions that we have listed here. So if you put together your cash flow budget, kind of similar to that enterprise budget that we talked about in, the, in a prior unit, as well as the partial budget that we just went over in unit six, is we can take that information and then help have that filter into our cash flow budget and try and now decide, is a plan financially feasible? Uh, can we do what we say that we were going to do in an enterprise budget? And then if we're projecting maybe some differences in a partial budget, how does that flow into and is a plan actually going to work? Is there going to be sufficient capital, and I mean cash, available at specific times whenever there's bills coming due? Do you have cash to make the payments? Uh, if not, are you going to need to make, uh, you know, if, are, are you going to need to make an agreement on a loan with a loan officer? Uh, how much is, how much are you going to need to borrow for, from an operating note in order to meet those cash shortage times? That happens often in agriculture. It's a long lag time between when most of the inputs are applied and billed and when your grain uh, or livestock are available for sale. There's there's a large gap in there and cash doesn't flow in at an equal rate each and every month. So that's why the operating note is occasionally required. Is the plan that you're putting together going to generate enough cash to repay any new loans, whether it's mortgage loans or that operating note I was just referring to? Um, so that you can kind of get a projection together and see if things are going to work out feasibly for you. So features of a cash flow budget, in summary, it's projected inflows and outflows of cash for a business over a given period of time. You can do one for a month, you could do one for a quarter, or you could do one for the whole year. It just depends upon what you want to break out your time slot into. Usually it's going to, uh, it's a future accounting period. It doesn't much do a whole lot of good to do a cash flow budget on something that's already occurred. That's a, that's a past history study. Uh, you're going to project out for a quarter or maybe a year um, to do some forward planning. So estimate that amount and timing of cash coming in and out and your potential borrowing needs. So here's kind of a just a diagram that your textbook supplies of cash inflows versus as they come into your checking account and then cash outflows. Very simple as to where they may, where it may come in and where it may go. The last thing that you want to do is say, where did my cash go? Instead of give it an assignment. So two things that are different in a cash flow budget from a whole farm budget. Number one, all cash flows, not just revenue and expense. So it doesn't include non-cash items. Um, you know, it's really emphasis on just cash movement. Uh, from farm, non-farm, or personal cash, all those things should be included, but it doesn't necessarily include value of grain in the bin. That's, that's for a different place in time. Number two, the concern is with timing of revenue expenses. So when is cash going to be re received and paid out in addition to for what and how much? So specifically cash needs. So timing is again reflected monthly, quarterly, annually. And it shouldn't really replace any of the other budgeting tools that we've talked about. It shouldn't, a cash flow budget shouldn't replace doing an enterprise budget. It shouldn't replace doing a partial budget whenever necessary. And it certainly shouldn't replace doing a whole farm budget. Uh, those, all of those things have other purposes. 
uh, your cash flow budget has a very specific purchase fo focusing on cash. So uh, the most information that we're going to talk about when we do budgeting is found in a cash flow budget on a home farm budget. You know, if we build our cash flow budget appropriately, all that stuff is going to filter into your whole farm budget appropriately. Next, we got to talk about actual versus estimated cash flows. In estimated, of course, we can do projections and forward planning, actual cash flows for historical analysis. So you can go backwards and look and see uh, in prior years, when did bills come due for fertilizer or insecticide? And then you can project on your cash flow budget when you might need cash for those certain things. So make sure and keep good records. Uh, compare monthly budgeted values and Hopefully you're going to get an early warning if deviations for that plan so that you can correct them if need be. Next, it also shows a bit of a financial structure for the business, and it's a good starting point to do future planning. And hopefully you don't overlook anything. So structurally, what does it look like? First, always have a beginning balance uh, for each month or quarter or, or year. Uh, beginning balance of cash on hand. And then you're going to start to list in line item by line item again, that chart of accounts that we've been referring to all semester. Uh, sales or cash that's going to be generated from operation of the farm business. If that includes capital sales or ca sales of capital assets, put that in there. If you're going to sell off a piece of equipment this year, plan on that cash coming in. Um, also, any non-business cash receipts or non-farm cash income, cash gifts, things that are going to be money coming in. Um, new or borrowed loans, you need to, you know, uh, or new, new operating notes. If you're going to have cash available due to an operating note, um, include that. Unless it doesn't have a matching outflow, then don't. Again, here's a, again, a chart of accounts, and it gives you um, just names at period one and period two, um, and a real basic chart of accounts. And in segment two, you'll see a little bit more specific chart of accounts, but this is a very simple approach, could be done on an Excel spreadsheet in which you could start to just project when cash would be needed and when cash is going out. Generally speaking, there are four uses for cash. Number one, of course, farm operating expense or agribusiness operating expense. Uh, two, capital purchases. Got to build a new shop. Um, we need some cash available to at least get started. Um, non-business or other expenses, and here I'm primarily talking about taxes and living expenses and maybe a 401k contribution or something like that. And then finally, principal and interest payment on debt, uh, whether it's mortgage payments, operating notes, vehicle loans, whatever it might be. That's going to wrap up segment one of unit seven. Uh, when we return with segment two, we're going to get into some more detail on how this cash flow budget actually works from a nuts and bolts perspective, and you'll see some more detailed chart of accounts. Thanks for tuning in to segment, uh, segment one. We'll look forward to seeing you in class soon.